Hi, I'm Dr. Etty Benchabat from Brain Rehab Academy. And in this video, I'd like to share with you a case that a clinician asked me about. And I thought there were some really good learning lessons to all of you in that case. So the case is about someone who had surgery and was struggling with movement. Their walking was a bit wobbly. They were walking with wide kind of gait and looked a bit unsteady on their feet. And the clinician was wondering, is it apraxia or is it ataxia? Just as a quick reminder, apraxia is the loss of skilled movement. So someone has the ability to perform movement in a skilled manner, but they can't quite access the information they need from their brain to be able to do that movement. But in terms of muscle strength and sensation and coordination, they have it all. As opposed to ataxia, where the problem there is a little bit different. The problem is not about being able to access the movement. They can start the movement, they can access the movement, they know what movement they need to do, but the movement is very, very uncoordinated. And the way you can differentiate between the two of them is by analyzing how they move. So someone with apraxia is not going to have that um, wobbly or that degree of wobbliness or shakiness that someone with ataxia has. But more importantly, the brain imaging can show you the difference between them. So if someone has apraxia, you would expect to see the lesion. You'd expect to see a cortical lesion somewhere in the area of the inferior frontal gyrus, as opposed to someone with ataxic symptoms, which you would expect to see involvement of the cerebellum. So if you look carefully at the brain images, you'll be able to dissociate between apraxia and ataxia. Careful observation and clinical assessment can help you distinguish between apraxia and ataxia but brain imaging can make it really easy for you to differentiate between them. So there you have it, apraxia and ataxia can look similar, however, they're very different conditions and they could be dissociated from each other quite easily with the help of brain imaging. And then you would know how to treat them because apraxia will be treated very differently from ataxia. With apraxia, the problem is being able to initiate the movement to be able to know the exact parameters of the movement, as opposed to ataxia, where the problem there is to coordinate the movement. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share. And I look forward to sharing more brain imaging information with you in my next video.